This is our well-used and beloved 2014 Harley-Davidson police bike. A bike that has stood the test of time and handled every mission we threw at it with ease, all except one. Uh -oh. And this is my friend Carolyn, or as you might know her, Doodle. And she has a goal to be the first YouTuber to train with an actual police department. Her plan was to use her police Harley, but a 175 shot of nitrous made other plans. That's head gasket. I blew out a head gasket. So the good news is, I've got a new wrenching buddy in the shop. The bad news is, despite her being an accomplished rider, Doodle has zero experience turning a wrench. Okay, I did, you, you remember I said, I wasn't kidding when I said I, I have no maintenance experience. That's okay, I have very little. <laughs> okay. In full disclosure, I've never done this job on a Harley before, and honestly, I've never been this far into a Harley engine. Now, granted, we're just doing the top side of things, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so the problem with this bike is the head gasket, the front head gasket popped or blew out, and that was just from too much nitrous, too much explosion in the cylinder, and it, uh, the weak link was the head gasket. So... Do you know what the head gasket is? Uh, is it that? Yeah, so this is the head and this is the cylinder and there's a gasket right in between here. So when they bolt together, that's what holds your compression into the cylinder. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna remove the seat, we're gonna remove the tank, we're gonna remove this stuff, we're gonna remove the exhaust and the intake and then we're gonna pull the rocker boxes and the cams and whatever else is in there, I don't know yet, and then we're gonna pull the head off. And once the head's off, we can replace the gaskets and put everything back together the exact opposite of how we took it apart. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the seat off and once we pull the seat off, we're gonna unhook the battery and we're gonna get the battery on the charger just so we can get it uh, to fire up when we're done. And uh, as we start taking all this stuff off, everything under here will become more exposed and we'll be good to go. Uh, I'm a little nervous, but luckily I'm not totally by myself. And uh, even though Craig is a crazy mechanic, I think I trust him. <coughs> Somebody's got it, right? <laughs> so. First thing is we're gonna take off the seat. Oh, look at that, I don't even need tools. Finger tight racing. I'm just gonna get her started. And then I'm gonna sit in front of the air conditioner and tell her what to do. Okay, so you have no concerns about me riding this a thousand miles home? No. Would you tell me if you did? No. <laughs> no, I, I think once we get this done, the, the bike's gonna be solid enough that you're all right. All right, cool. And if not, you have my phone number. Uh, I probably won't answer. Um, <laughs> So we're gonna delete as much of this as possible and still have the bike running because all that does is make you go faster. Okay, I don't need that. Not today. <laughs> so let's start here. I think that's right. Yep, put it on there. Oh, I'm gonna do it, okay. Yep. All right. Perfect. So while Craig in classic Tom Sawyer fashion convinced Doodle to do all the work to fix my motorcycle, I can't help but think how much this is going to cost me to fix it properly when I get the bike back. But who knows, maybe she will fix it properly. The first thing they did was remove the fuel tank and then the exhaust. Then the nitrous system, something that all bikes should really have. Then the intake. And then Craig mansplained Doodle her first piece of mechanicaling advice. Righty tighty lefty loosey. Lefty this way, right? Oh. That way. Maybe go that way. So think of it always at the top left. If I'm top. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Right? <laughs> I just watched her brain melt. <laughs> okay, now let me show you a trick. I sound like I broke something. Nope, you're good. You just okay. broke it loose. Open hand. Mm. Okay? You don't want to punch anything when it lets loose. You'd rather hit it. Okay. Open hand. Okay. So whenever you're using ratchets, wrenches, Allen's, anything like that, try to keep an open hand. Okay. And always look, you know, like keep in your mind, look to see like when this thing breaks free, like is my hand headed anywhere mm. sharp or? Safety tip, is that the first, I think that's the first safety tip I heard from you. Safety third. And maybe you can add a little leverage. Okay. With something like this. Oh. Give it a pull. Okay. But yeah, kind of, there you go. Doing great. Great. Keep sounding like I just broke something, but. Since you're so good at it, maybe I have you come over here and do these. Okay. Yeah, I'm a pro. If you want, I could just finish up this whole job. Do it. I'll stand here in front of the air conditioner. All right. Coffee. Great. 
Hey, can you turn off the camera so we can finish it? And then I'll come back and make it look like I did it. Okay, there's one. Keep this up and I'm gonna have to make her a sandwich for lunch. <laughs> oh, you really did leave. You said you got it, so just holler if you need some help. Those yeah. big chrome things on the top come off next. Okay, I was lying. As they continued working on the bike, they removed the intake manifold, drained the oil, removed the heel and toe shifter, and removed the floorboards. Also, they can remove the primary cover. And since Craig is not only a great mechanic, but he is also a great teacher. That's why Doodle's about to get her next important mechanic tip. So what I like to do when I'm pulling, I always like to start at one particular spot. So for me, I start like top left and I work myself around. So I'll get a rag and I'll lay a rag out and I'll just start, see this one here's long, mm -hmm. short, short, long. So you'll have a couple different lengths and then that just kind of helps. Mm, keep it in order. Keep it in order. Or I do have, I think I still have my cardboard, stator cover, clutch cover. You can like put them in there. Wow. And then that should line okay. them right up. Cool. Stator cover? What's the stator cover? Might have been for something else. So I would go around and just break them loose like this. Okay. And then all the way around and then we'll come through with the zip gun. And that way if just any of them are tight, again, it's just a little precautionary so you don't strip anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you can put that on the zip gun there if you want. Oh no. You're all right. I think I stripped it. It doesn't look perfectly hex on. You're, you're good. Okay. Oh man, we're done. Oh no. Let me see it. Just like that, dude broke the police, Harley. <laughs> After all it's been through. <laughs> no, that was my fault. I screwed it up, so I'll fix it. That's a nice guy. How do you like working on Harley's now? It's not so bad. All right. Keep that optimism up. <laughs> Game on. You're gonna trust me to keep going? Oh yeah, you were doing fine. I just, I yeah. gave you the gun back in the wrong position. So that was my fault. <laughs> so we'll just stick those. Wow, how organized. So after Doodle gets all the primary bolts out and organized in their proper place, Craig explains to her what's actually going on inside the primary of a Harley Davidson. Okay, so this is the compensator. Okay. Compensator sprocket. Primary chain, primary chain adjuster. It's an automatic adjuster. So as this chain loosens up a little bit, this will rise and keep it in tension. This is the clutch. This piece here is what they call the clutch basket. In here, you can see the, your clutch plates. So this is the wave, wave washer. So power's coming out of the engine through your compensator, primary chain to your clutch. As you pull your clutch in, pressure plate moves out and you see how that gave room here mm -hmm. so now what will happen is that spins freely your engine's turning because your bike's still running your clutch is in it is spinning this basket and it's leaving this which is tied to your transmission your input shaft to the transmission so it's not spinning when you let go of your clutch it puts pressure back on everything and it locks this whole unit up tight wow. does that make sense sure all what i can remember is you press this and that comes out yep can I do it again? Sure. Do it again, Uncle Steve. Oh, yeah. Whoa. We got this. <laughs> I think that's why I actually have this. That's like the manest tool I've ever seen. We're gonna look in here and we're gonna watch to see the, uh, the piston come up. Okay. Now let's see if those push rods are loose. I think we have tension off of them. Let's pull. This rocker box. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so far today with me here, has your pace been slower or faster? Um, I guess you've never done this before, so you wouldn't know, right? Right. I mean, as far as, as far as like just general wrenching, it all depends what I'm doing. Am I just hanging out in the shop, doing my thing? Am I trying to be profitable? Lefty, uh -huh. lefty. Right? No? No? What? I'll just think it's the opposite of what I think, and then I'll get it right. It's not always. It's not. So how do you know when it is and when it isn't? Every once in a while, there'll be something that's reverse thread. What? How do you know it's until you try it? Yeah, or you just kind of know like what stuff should be. Mm -hmm. Spinning things. 
spinning things. Like the compensator and stuff, or some clutches. Oh, I guess the right direction. Listen to that. <laughs> okay, there's a rocker box cover, rocker box gasket. That's surprisingly clean looking. Yeah. So these are what they call the rocker arms. Mm -hmm. So we have our cams here. That is what is spinning and moving our push rods. And then that's moving these rocker arms and that pushes this valve down. Do you know what the valves do? The intake valve is letting the gas and air into the cylinder, into the combustion chamber. The exhaust valve is letting it out once it's burned. There's quite a bit of spring tension on this stuff. On like valve springs are very stout. I just don't want it to get cattywampus and crack something or break something. No cattywampus is here. And this is the part of the video where you know, I'm, it's, I'm realizing it's, it's 12 o'clock, man. Craig, I, I need you to finish up the voiceovers. I know I said I'd help, but it's, it's getting pretty late for me. You got this. You got this. Fine, I'll finish it up. Is that where you have your microphone? Yeah, that's where I put it. And then after explaining the next few steps of Doodle, I let her on her own to do this amazing thing. Well, it's not that amazing, but we put some epic music behind it, and it's going to look great. This is really easy. I feel like I'm a pro now. These are going to be tight. Okay, so I can put a little more. Ooh. Open hand. Open hand. Okay. Come around and give it one more of those. Oh. Okay, now we're going to do the other one. Oh. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh. Perfect. Okay. And then we got one more. Okay, those are the head bolts. Okay. Now, you get to pull this head off. Up now. and towards me? Yep. Perfect. Okay. But this is the head gasket right here. Mm -hmm. So you can see, we just totally blew out that head gasket. Oh, wow. So. This is what's helping hold the compression in mm -hmm. so that it's not blowing out between these meeting surfaces. Oh my gosh, they replaced this tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. Jeez. You do have this, right? No. You don't? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be honest, I am a little afraid for my life, this a thousand mile ride home, because Craig takes a lot of risks with his bikes, I've noticed. Like, I'm pretty sure I watched one of his videos where he was riding a bike that uh, the front brakes weren't working. This is awesome! Pretty sure I saw him use a lawnmower battery to uh, start his dad's old bike, too. It'll start a motorcycle. Well, it means there's a good chance we're gonna see fireworks when I hook this up, because inevitably I'm gonna hook it up wrong. So, I'm hoping I don't know. He's not going to take all those risks with me because when I ride this home, I won't know what to do with it, how to fix it. And after that amazing vote of confidence, I explained to Doodle all about gasket kits, the benefits of cylinder cross hatching, why the Phillies lost game seven, and all sorts of other really neat and interesting things. But enough of that, it's time to start getting this bike back together. So things are going pretty good so far and, and Doodle's picking it up. I'm going to say pretty good. She seems like a sharp girl, but it's gonna get super important here in a few minutes when we start putting this back together. She's gonna to have to retorque the heads. Now I'm gonna give her the specs and I'm gonna show her how to do it, but ultimately she's the one that's gonna be doing it. I think she's got it. Yeah, I, I, I think she's got it. I think we're good. And screw them down and okay. stay nice and tight. Okay, I don't know how this is gonna go. Like, I, I, it sounds like he's speaking Arabic to me. I have no idea what he's saying. Oh, that bad? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to act confident and uh, just do what he says, but. Well, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, the bike could blow up on my way home. Now we're putting it back together. Now we're gonna put it back together. Ah, oh, okay. Wait, wait, just to be clear, what's, what was the fix? All that was broken was that, that. little piece. Yep. That, it's a little bit ridiculous. Now this bike had to get this naked for this one thing. It's crazy, right? Yes. Is this usually how fixing things goes? A lot of times, yeah. So we want to get it onto those dowels. Wait, why do we have to take off the exhaust and the saddlebags? Well, because the exhaust was attached to this piece here. Oh. 
And the saddlebags are just in the way? Of taking off the exhaust, yep. That appears to be on. All right. All right, now we need a little bit of oil. We're gonna put our head bolts back on. Put a little bit in there. Okay. Finger tight first and then Finger I use Finger tight the... first and then we're gonna go through and there's actually three rounds of torque. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four. How do you know what order to go in? The, the book here tells us. Here it gives our numbers. So this is looking down on top of the head. Mm -hmm. This is the side you were on. So here's one, two, oh. three, four. Tighten the cylinder head bolts too. We're gonna go 120 to 144 inch pounds. Continue the same sequence. Tighten each bolt to 15 to 17 foot pounds. Final tighten each bolt an additional 90 degrees in the same sequence. So 130 inch pounds, 16 to 17 foot pounds, and then 90 degrees. You got that? <laughs> so we'll set our torque wrench. So you're going to start here with this one. I'm not sure if I got the green light. Just, just nice and smooth. I got green light. Okay, and double check your lines. They look like they're at 90 degrees. Yeah. Okay, so the head's torqued down. Cool. That's that. That's a very specific torquing. Yeah, just a dab will do you. Okay, we're gonna tighten to 13.6 to 19 Nm and, uh, and 120 to 168 inch pounds. And then there's a note that said, if the engine was left in chassis for service, final tighten the rear left rocker housing bolt using a torque wrench with a quarter inch drive. We want to put our push rods back in. Remember what the push rods are? Yes. Yes. We're doing stuff, Dan. Right here. Yes. And this, we put that on the bottom, right? Yep. And that one is bottom. In. Take. Yep. So look at your cylinder. Which Do you remember which is intake and which is exhaust? Intake. Remember your throttle body, carburetor, everything would be here. Mm. Coming in. Intake. I just stick yep. it in? Just stick it in. It's going to come into that tube. Cool. So that's good. So then the next thing we'll do is get a rocker arm assembly. That's this, right? Yes. I remembered something. And then this just gets set down right on top. How are you feeling about this? I mean, I am perfectly ready to trailer this home if I have to, but I'd really rather not because it'd just be so cool to ride a police bike a thousand miles home. It would be, would be. You gotta be cool. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of blue. Lock tight. Okay, that's that. And now we have rocker box cover. So we have this gasket. This needs to pop off. I'll hand you that. Okay. And that's gonna come right in over top here. Should I put it on yet? Yep. Okay. Look at me, Sue Mechanicking. This a wipe. It's probably the cleanest this has been in a while. That is the front. Great. Not too bad, huh? That was a very long process. Yeah. It's four o'clock. We started at like 9:30, 10. 9:30, 10. Wow. And I'm sure slower because you were stopping to t teach me. You slowed me down a lot. Whoa. <laughs> Let's see what we can get figured out. Let's get this bike together and running. Step number one. Doodle. Yes. Put this back together. Do you remember how we do this? Yeah, totally. No problem. Okay. I'll we'll do it in 30 minutes. You got it. I'm just going to sit by the air conditioner, sip my coffee, and I'll point you in the right direction. All right. Plan. You got to ride it. You know what? Isn't there some liability in that? Man, I hope not. Let's start with the intake. We'll do the intake, and then this will be wrapped up. We'll do the push rod tubes, and then we'll throw the uh, primary cover back on over there. Intake, exhaust, saddlebags, and then we should be about done. Sounds so simple. Okay, so I ran and grabbed a different intake last night because I don't want to pull these nitrous injectors out of this intake, and I wasn't going to be able to find a plug or anything so i grabbed this one this is the uh like this would be the in intake track throttle body so you have your butterfly here so the air comes in here the fuel gets added here with your injectors and then poof, right into the intake so 
You want to grab an Allen wrench and we'll pull those three Allens off. This will come off and then we'll be able to put on our other intake or other air cleaner assembly. So if you want to do that, I'll get this ready. I can do that. Uh, what do I do if it's stripped too much and I can't, this thing won't catch. I would just like to, I would just like to say that I didn't strip it. Oh, okay. You jam a bigger Allen wrench in yeah, it. Yeah, we could do a couple things. Let's take a look here. Okay. It's definitely stripped, and that's because when somebody they didn't get it all the way down in. Mm -hmm. So if you look, you can kind of see, especially up here on this top side. Mm -hmm. See that little ridge? There's actually a little bit of good bite left. So I just got it to, like I could just kind of feel and it sat there, there it sat in. So just kind of push down as I rotate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's out. Uh, yep, you can just leave it there for now. It's gonna be a Harley mechanic out there laughing at me. There's always somebody laughing at us. If there's a Harley mechanic in the comments, make sure you laugh in the comments. <laughs> I hope someone with the handle Harley mechanic 007 right. types that. So, what blew the first gasket? The nitrous tanks? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it was rider error. Kind of, yeah, because when you're when you're blowing nitrous, it's generally when you're high RPM, you know, kind of full throttle, just like, you know, you're going and just want that extra shot when you're up on the top. And when we were playing around, Sean was doing roll-ons with the nitrous, so he was just blowing nitrous. And to be honest, this is like the biggest shot of nitrous you could possibly throw at this thing. So I don't even know how big it is, but it's huge. So he was doing roll-ons, just blowing nitrous and that, that low P RPM and then building up and whatever, it just finally let loose. It was pretty big explosions going on inside that cylinder. So this is called the primary cover. I'm just gonna clean uh, the like rim and this right here. And then I'm going to put it back on. I'm gonna try my best to try and help Craig put stuff back on. Kind of hard to remember it all. If Craig wasn't here, definitely would have needed more notes, pictures of like everything before I undid it. Okay. And uh... Oh. Oh. Oh no. Have you all seen this? Look how cool this is. This is how Craig makes sure that it's in, see some of the screws are long and some are short. It's how you make sure that you stay in the right order. So this first one right here started here and then it just goes all the way around and that's how you know the order. That's pretty sweet. I am so smart, I am so When smart. I'm tightening all these things back on for like the this cover is every bolt up to a certain, like you wanna use the torque wrench that gives you specific numbers or is it mostly just around the engine? Yeah, around the engine. I mean, there are, torque numbers for those, but we're gonna just use the German torque setting. What's the German torque setting? Guten tight. <laughs> when we go through here, don't like start here and crank this one tight. Mm -hmm. Just go around and just, just get them so that they're just right up against. And then we'll go through and I'll show you how to tighten them all nice and even. I don't have your uh, gift of being able to look over here and then look at the tool and be like, oh, I need this. Or not even look at the tool. You're just like, oh, I need a, this number, I need a one half. You just do it enough. <laughs> it's funny though, because like, when you don't do it, you lose it. Now, let's see if I remember how to put on a floorboard and that's, what does it look like over there? Yeah. No, that's, that's not helpful. <laughs> okay, I don't think I'm doing this right. I'm trying to push this in here. Do I just need to loosen it more? Do I need to use a hammer, your favorite I'll pull tool? pull this off. So the way this works is you have splines in here and the spline shaft, this pops on and, oh. and then the bolt that actually comes up from the bottom. But if you try to put it in here, it, it needs to go through this in order to fit up. Mm. And then that's what holds it from in and out. And then the spline on spline connection keeps it from t rotating on the shaft. Righty tighty. I got it. I got Nailed the direction it. right. I finally got the direction right. Gonna be a carpenter, cause she's really nailing it. Oh! Hey! Look at all that dirt. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> now, I just gotta. Those are Ugga Duggas. Ugga Duggas? Yeah. Two Ugga Duggas? Mm. 
three Ugga Duggas. Mm -hmm. That's an important, you gotta know the Ugga Duggas. Okay. It's like when my mom says, put this much salt, like. <laughs> yeah, right, right. How many Ugga Duggas? Well, let's start with one. Yeah, yep. And then tighten this back one. Yep. Now we'll do the front one. It does stink not being able to listen to music while YouTubing. What are you talking about, Craig? We're playing music right now. I'm playing music in my head. We're playing music right now, Craig. Sorry. <laughs>Who won? Me. Below. <laughs> All right. So having put half these pieces on, how are you feeling about the structural integrity of this bike? Uh, well, I'm hoping that, I'm thinking Craig will finish it off with me. The yeah, Craig's kind of lazy. He's not going to go over all the screws that you put in though. Well, I'll be doing a lot of pre-ride inspections then on my way home. I should probably buy some Allen wrenches. So I didn't bring any of those. She's like going through her list. She's like, all right, I need Allen wrenches. I need a new mechanic friend because this guy's an idiot. Apparently I need a hammer. <laughs> I did this. Oh, you and bugger. And this and this. Okay. So this goes here. You want to lift your side up. Just kind of wiggle it. Wait, there you go. Oh. How are you looking over there? Pretty good. And that just slides right on over this. Yep, yep, yep. Is it going in? Mm-hmm. I gotta say, you know, if Harley gives 12 hours to do this, honestly, I don't think we were that far off. I think we did pretty good. It was much slower with you teaching me too. So I'm kind of questioning that 12 hour estimate they give. Well, you gotta let the guys make a little money. You know, the way that works is if they get it done in 10 hours, they get paid for 12 hours. Oh. If they get it done in 14 hours, they get paid for 12 hours. That makes sense now. You know, mechanic gets one broken bolt in here or something stupid and all of a sudden he's working for free for the next day and a half. Oh no. insane to me. We got this bike basically completely naked just to replace that one little thing. That one little gasket. But you know, it's, it's cool now that you got to like see, you know, what's in there and, yeah. and what's, what's what. And mm -hmm. It's not super intimidating, right? Not anymore. It is cool to like, to just know what so many little things are now. Cause I've really spent zero time, honestly, trying to learn maintenance stuff. You know, you take your bike to the shop and they're like, oh, that's gonna be $8,000. And you can be like, okay, I know what needs to be done, makes sense. Or you're like, you're crazy. Like it's You're just, ripping me off. Yeah, you know. I'm getting real excited now. I'm getting real excited. Listen, we are going to make it home through Centralia, through War Virginia, through the Good Town Gone Bad. We're gonna make it home and we're gonna do 3,000 U-turns together and then we're gonna train at the police art department and you're not gonna have any problems, okay? Or if you do, then it's gonna be something I can fix real, real easy, real quick. And for not too expensive. Thank you. This is cool. Now, we're gonna just gather up the tools, we'll set them on the bench, and then we can fire this up. <gasps> what does this say, Dan? What, what is this supposed to be? It says I'm hot. Says you're <laughs> Should we put the table down and fire it up? Yes. Whoa. You wanna do the honors? <gasps> Yes. All right. It's the moment of truth. It's about to happen. Okay, ready? Ah! Oh my God. Listen, sounds good. Oil light went off right away, so that means we build oil pressure. Everything's good there. Sounds beautiful. 
charging the battery and we got the check engine light and that's gonna be that's gonna be because we're only running 102 sensor. I don't need to freak out about it. Okay. Yeah! Nice. That's not stock exhaust, right? Uh, it's screaming eagle exhaust. So they're extra loud. A little bit louder, yep. They scream like an eagle. Screamed like America. 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 I'm excited. Me too. Nice. I'm so excited. This is gonna be so cool. Does it feel any better hearing the bike run now that you helped fix it? It feels really cool. Feels really cool. As it, it's amazing right now that you see all those little pieces and how all those yeah. little things are. Yeah. Like in your head, you can kind of imagine like push rods going up and down and valves opening and closing. So now I'll be riding a bike where I like know it a little bit better. That's pretty cool. And it's not brand new. It's not <laughs> brand new. Yeah. All right. Thank so you for everything. That was you're so welcome. Fun. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. And there she goes. Now she can fix bikes as well as ride bikes. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out one of these two right here. I know you're gonna love them. See ya. Bye, Doodle.